right, everyone. So, uh, welcome back to the India Market Reviews. Uh, this is been a sort of two-week break. We didn't have one last week, um, basically because there was really nothing new to say at that time, um, and also just wanted to take a break. So we are um, on 25th November. Yesterday, derivatives expiry got over in the Indian markets, and the Nifty, as we probably all know, shot up a uh, good, healthy, high and 40 points today. Uh, but basically, has uh, pivoted around 8,000 uh, for the last one week or so. Um, and the question that we want to ask today is, uh, what next? Is it likely to go to 7,000 first, or is it likely to go to 9,000 first? Right? Uh, we all know uh, a lot of the things that are going on in our country, demonetization and the parliamentary logjam and the protests, etc. Uh, it's uh, becoming a, what do I say, um, um, a subject which elicits strong emotions now uh, from the Go guys who are uh, for it, from the guys who are not for it, and we've seen some pretty strong statements come out in the parliament um, for and against and outside. So uh, it's, it's the drama is not over, and it's interesting to watch. So we'll see. I mean, you know where this goes and uh, all that. And of course, Trump, and uh, that's sort of settling down. Um, appointments being made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of um, other things there. Uh, on the global stage, but of course, uh, we've been more or less preoccupied with uh, what's happening here in India. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is the upcoming Punjab and UP elections. And today's uh, Prime Minister was all over uh, plane hopping, uh, speech hopping um, in uh, Punjab. Um, just amazing morning, one talk on Constitution Day. I didn't know that we had a Constitution Day. And... Um, there was a speech, then two or three, I'm not sure, two at least I saw on TV. All right, so anyhow, um, uh, and in the meantime, interesting stuff, stuff has happened in the, you know, in the global markets. So while we have been clearly heading down uh, for uh, whatever reason you might want to ascribe for the Indian downtrend, the global markets have been uh, trending up, as you will see. And this is a pretty strong contrast. and. Um, uh, uh, certainly makes for very interesting discussion, analysis, and perhaps uh, opportunities. All right. So, without further ado, let's uh, jump in, and we'll start by looking at the global indices first. And what you should be able to see on the screen, and please confirm that you can, is the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. Right. And uh, the big key thing about the Dow Jones is the fact that uh, it's now basically trading at life highs. It has broken the 19,000 uh, mark and for all practical purposes, an excellent uh, example on perhaps the world's most important equity index of uh, a pattern that we are, I'm sure, all very familiar with. It's like a flag, right, or even a pennant. So we have an uptrend uh, flag or pennant on the Dow Jones. So made a move from 18,000 to 19,000, 18,800. Another 800 points will easily make it go to 19,500, 19,600. So it's on the way there. There's absolutely no doubt about it. So Dow Jones on a very strong uh, footing. Please ignore the volume picture at the bottom. There's some bug with that. All right. Same thing more or less, I think, with the S&P 500, as you can see. The S&P 500 is something which uh, has also broken its life high. So both the narrow and the broad market in um, uh, the U.S. Uh, going up on pretty uh, strong. Uh, uh, the S&P 500 volume, as you can see, quite strong. Of course, it's not increasing, increasing, but the initial move happened with strong volumes and uh, the volume, I would say, at the very least, has not tapered off. Um, so this should give some more uh, upward momentum to the uh, U.S. markets. And while talking about the U.S., very interesting is also the fact that uh, 
uh, the US dollar as uh, you know crossed the hundred mark on the US dollar index, and the dollar is becoming stronger and stronger. Uh, more and more uh, um, sort of uh, agreement that uh, the next Fed meeting you will see an interest rate hike in the U.S., uh, making the U.S. dollar even more attractive, and that puts uh, downward pressure on emerging markets. And the Indian rupee actually made a new life low yesterday, uh, just by a paisa. Uh, the RBI has been um, defending the rupee yesterday and today, uh, but uh, well, generally, you know, interventions like this uh, somehow don't uh, last for too long or not very successful. So we could see the rupee break uh, further down. And if that's the case, then there's a whole host of uh, consequences uh, for that on the various Indian stocks and uh, companies and uh, both good and bad. Right? So maybe we'll uh, touch upon that uh, in today's session. So coming back to indices, uh, we look at uh, DAX Germany. And uh, last week we had mentioned about this, or rather two weeks back we had mentioned about this resistance. And uh, well, it hasn't yet broken, obviously. Uh, quite surprised, actually, because uh, I was thinking that uh, it might have uh, broken. Well, it clearly has not. Right? Still trending uh, sideways. and. Uh, it is definitely my my the the opinion uh, taken two weeks back still holds that this is probably a resistance that is waiting to be broken up. But wait till it breaks and then we'll uh, say that it did. Coming to FTSE, so the FTSE after having made a <clears throat> uh, just give me thirty seconds. So the FTSE after making a LIFI post Brexit uh, cooled off a bit and uh, trying to you know, sort of go up, but uh, now looking a little shaky to me, in my opinion. All right. So if you just uh, the price picture, uh, you know, looking. Looking very iffy, you know, if I can use that word. So we just have to wait and watch as to what's going to happen here uh, next. So that's a change. So black sideways would see not going up as it used to, and uh, coming to France. So that also has not broken out of its uh, range-bound movement for uh, a good five six months. Um, so it looks like a lot of consolidation going on in Europe and uh, looking at uh, Hong Kong, well, okay, that's also clearly down and uh, still in a, definitely in a downtrend. Might have broken out, but too early to say. So we'll wait and watch that. And, uh, Going to Nikkei. Oh, I had a problem with this data. Uh, okay. I know it's not clear, but it seems to be trending up uh, at this point. So we'll just have to wait and watch with that also. All right. So mixed bag, uh, I would say, uh, the rest of the world. Uh, the only the U.S seems to be in a you know pretty perky and strong situation and everything else seems to be sort of uh, um, sideways to down is how I would put it the rest of the world that is and uh, coming to India I think I'd like to put this uh, um,
just going intraday basically uh, thought i seen something so just wanted to see if i can okay not really not. okay hmm. okay uh, coming to nifty uh, here So the Nifty basically, as we all know, moved from its life high as of almost uh, 9,000, quite a significant fall from all the way from 9,000 to 7,900 uh, early part of the week, and then today it has, uh, you know, made a very smart 148 point uh, recovery. Right. So Nifty. Uh, made a nice recovery now the question of course is whether we're going to go into an uptrend or uh, what do we uh, see here uh, first of all something to note uh, about again somehow you know i still get impressed by these things on the way the market behaves this is a line uh, this this line uh, at 7934 that the crosshair is, is something we put many weeks back and look at that the market comes you know just there uh, on Monday and uh, you know stop there and that was the bottom for the week at least for now um, you know of course somebody will argue that that's just coincidence but you see it often enough and you start to wonder uh, you know is it coincidence or what's going on here uh, anyhow so that that was an important support that it uh, you know bounced off, um, and at this point, uh, eight thousand is perhaps a short term, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, bottom. I too early to say that uh, the market has turned around. Uh, the volumes today, okay, normal volumes at best, definitely not high volumes, and of course today is uh, Friday and it's. Uh, um, you know, end of the week, but uh, you know, this this could be for now a, a temporary bottom. There is, of course, one of the things to keep in mind about the December RBI policy expectations of half percent cut in the rates and things like that. If that happens, there will definitely be a big boost to the market, and they would uh, you know strongly rally up. Um, having said that, um, you may also have read the uh, last one or two days papers about research reports from various um, uh, international and local research houses which are talking about a GDP growth rate coming down by up to 1% uh, due to this demonetization drive. So how will earnings get hit versus uh, cheaper money? So it's a very interesting uh, situation and we'll have to see uh, how it pans out. Anyhow. Uh, even if the market goes up, there are plenty of strong resistances on the top side. That's something to know. 8,300 is approximately where the 200-day moving average is, and the 150-day exponential moving average is at 8,430. And uh, you know, and then there's a whole resistance zone you could say between 8,250 and 8,350. So, unless there is, I think, a real strong uh, reason in a sense for the market to move up a little uh, skeptical as to whether one should you know buy into this um, I, I would say uh, you know given the earnings pressure the demand uh, sales having come down across the board for almost every you know product or service or anything that the country produces uh, this is going to be a hit on the fundamentals of the company and the earnings of the nifty uh, the things going up just makes it, it was already expensive if you, I'm sure we all remember that, makes it more expensive. So I would not want to be putting fresh money into this uh, market right now. Uh, I mean, this is just across the board a statement. Individual stocks may, uh, may deserve uh, investment or trading on the long side. Uh, but for now, um, early days could be just a bounce before uh, we start to see the market uh, you know, correct again. Uh, now the issue, of course, also is that the U.S. markets are going up, and uh, uh, an interest rate increase in the U.S. is not a good thing for emerging markets, and therefore for uh, India. 
so an interesting balance of um, uh, factors i think and uh, honestly i i don't want to be a person making a call right now uh, strongly event driven both india and global uh, which will the market pay more attention to i'm not sure uh, so the way in my opinion to you know participate in this market is either you are a very short term trader uh, with a very clear maybe half day one day two day three day view that's it and uh, even if you do that you have to be extremely clear at this point about significant event risk due to this constant policy announcement changes that you are seeing by the rbi the government uh, etc uh, so i mean uh, it's it's i know it's cliche but still anything could happen and that event risk could be well good or bad for a long or short position uh, generally i think as far as um, you know visibility certainty the market always hates that uh, lack of certainty and uh, there is more uncertainty in the system right now than usually and generally you know unless you've got a unexpected positive surprise um that generally bodes not so well for the market and market will tend to probably go down uh, but that's again my view and i think uh, i would rather take this uh, almost one day at a time or at least one in three days review the market to see how things may change one thing to definitely keep a note of as far as uh, market technical analysis is concerned is the macd rsi and stochastic so while none of them are positive and none of them are in a strong buy signal um on the other hand um, they are all not as negative as they were just a, you know a day or two back and potentially could be indicating a turn around uh, in the in the system but uh, again way too early to say that so if you are a short term aggressive trader sure there is something to look forward to um but i wouldn't be too much uh, in a hurry interesting that as far as the rsi just put a trend line on that um uh, i hardly ever do this but uh, it's not yet broken may break uh, we'll have to just wait and watch till it does uh, and then that could provide some more uh, technical reasons of strength for the market to rise not sure when the us fed meeting is if somebody can pull that up then maybe we can just get a date for that and uh, no when is the next fed meeting and when is the next rbi meeting if we have those dates then we can just decide and uh, All right. Uh, so we got some dates from Sudeep. Thank you, Sudeep. Uh, RBI policy December sixth, seventh, and Fed uh, policy thirteenth and fourteenth, thirteenth, fourteenth. So uh, essentially, if you get into December sixth, seventh, thirteenth, fourteenth. So uh, for our practical purposes, twenty eighth next week. So for the next three weeks, right? So till say sixth, seventh, unless sixth, seventh is a big announcement. You know, some half percent cut or something like that. In which case, we we'll definitely rally. Um, no question of uh, uh, rise in the rate, of course. Um, worst case stays flat. Otherwise, uh, uh, don't know. Uh, just a contrary in view. Unless the RBI takes a view that uh, um, you know, two things: the dollar or the rupee are actually becoming so weak. If it makes new lows. then interest rate cuts are not good for currencies it's one way to defend the currency is to offer higher interest rates uh, especially when you can get fdi in and all that and debt markets um so that won't be a great thing the other thing is uh, maybe the rbi takes a view that the demonetization thing is hitting the economy really badly and um, uh, earnings could be you know really hit bad and then really give a big cut rather so you've got uh, rupee depreciation on one side you've got the economic uh, impact or the earnings impact on the other side it'd be interesting to see and then of course all the money which is in the banks 
uh, but 13th, 14th. So I think in the coming three weeks, we've got two major events, and uh, of course, there'll be a lot more news from the, uh, the demonetization thing. So we'll have to see, and uh, I just take it day by day. But good to keep tabs and maybe do a more frequent review. Uh, thank you, Sudeep, for those dates. Yeah. All right. Um, so at best, I would say that uh, an upside of about till 8,300 is possible. Um, and then really a question of whether it can break to 8,350, 8,450 uh, to comment on whether it is really going to go up further from there. Okay, so that's on the Nifty. Um, more or less a similar picture on the Nifty Junior, except that it's a little more healthy in terms of being above the 200-day moving average. Um, the CNX 500, 500 stocks, well, more or less a copycat of uh, the Nifty, really nothing more to add. Coming to the sectors, Bank Nifty. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, really interesting that the Bank Nifty, uh, after that initial, uh, you know, especially, the, okay, let's look at PSU Bank Nifty also. First, before we comment on okay. CNX PSU Bank. Okay. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have read in the media or heard on TV about oh the public sector bank so much money and SBI's uh, price went up and I think PNB's price went up etc and all of that. But uh, well, it's obviously not held up uh, really well, has it? And it's not been able to break through. The 3250 mark as far as the PSU Bank Index is concerned is a massive resistance sitting at 3450 which has been there as you can see for uh, quite a long period of time. It's a, it's a, it's a multi-year zone uh, from 2012 onwards uh, and if you go to the weekly chart, no, okay, fine, it really didn't help. Uh, okay. Uh, too early to say that it's stalled, but uh, just you no know, wait and watch. Essentially, that uh, euphoria, I would say, as far as the PSU bank stocks uh, seems to have well, start died down a bit, right? going back to daily. Um, and sitting just at that resistance could easily just come down as much as it could go up. Bank Nifty, uh, clearly that's actually weaker. Uh, so PSU bank is still outperforming. But uh, the uh, private sector banks doing worse. And yesterday broke the 200-day moving average. Today just a little bit shy above it. But I would say in the longer term, looks like the banks are set to go down. And uh, even 17,300 uh, from the current price of 18,500 is, I think, in my opinion, a distinct uh, possibility. So that's about. Um, 1,000, 1,200 points fall from where we are right now, almost 8-9%. Uh, and uh, technically, we really don't see a, a recovery in banks uh, in the short term. So this is, uh, you know, in spite of the almost one and a half weeks of the RBI policy, um, at this point, at this point, and I'm saying this, this is a lot of uh, uh, sort of caution that at this point I would venture to say that even if the RBA policy is favorable as an in, in interest rate cut, I think uh, even though the banks, like, okay, let me rephrase this. Suppose the RBA policy is today or tomorrow or on Monday and there was a cut, right? I think uh, uh, there would definitely be a rally in the bank nifty but i suspect it would be short term maybe a couple of days or maximum four or five days a week and then i think it will go back down again that that's just my sense for the way the chart seems to be set up right um and of course i could be completely wrong on that but that's just my view at this point um you can clearly see first of all that as far as the bank nifty is concerned uh, uh, 
Today, the green candle really not strong at all, you know, compared to the Nifty. This is uh, definitely showing relative underperformance, uh, not a good sign. So, I think there is more downside for the bank Nifty, 17,800, 17,300, definitely. In case there is a rally to about 19,000 on the bank Nifty, I think it should be used to short it, where there may be a top loss at around 19,300, 19,250. All right. Coming to uh, autos, so they have been really hit badly. The uh, so Federation of Automobile Dealers of India, um, you know, uh, dealers survey amongst its members, and uh, they are saying that auto new car sales are virtually come to zero uh, standstill, and footfalls and inquiries have fallen by more than half. Um, so, uh, you know, really until then, unless there's something really drastic that is a turnaround, no reason to expect uh, any good news on this side. And this continues to look weak. I think uh, Bank Nifty. Uh, watch the 19... 19,000, 19,250 level. And I think uh, if it breaks that, then uh, you'll see much lower levels. Uh, actually, it has come to a certain support zone. It's going to be clean the longer term picture. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to see. No, there's a it's breaking support after support on the weekly chart. Would say there is some support there, but uh, really no, nothing on the chart to say that you know this is recovering at any time soon. I, I really think uh, this is one, and it could go down lower, maybe even sixteen thousand six hundred. Who knows? Right. And uh, all right, so for those of us who know about it, we had pointed out the bearish divergence on this uh, about a month, month and a half back. And uh, it took another month to basically just trickle down and then just went boom, pretty pop down. Right? So how divergences can help you sort of, uh, I would say, foresee the future, if I can say that. So anyhow, auto index clearly bearish at a sort of tentative support, so I would not want to build fresh shots, but a rise to 20,000 or 20,250 would definitely be a good place to short with a stop loss at around uh, 20,800. The problem of course is that the auto index, BSE auto index is not traded. So we'll have to work with the individual you know, auto stocks within to take a call. All right. Uh, consumer durables. Uh, usually not an index that we you know, view, but uh, this one's taken a beating. And uh, you know, just keep a watch on this. This could really turn out to just be a downtrend flag, looking like a uh, you know, small recovery, but it's not. The size of the candles also is uh, not reassuring at all. You could really see this drop down another thousand points. Uh, if it breaks next week, and that will take it to, well, how oh nice, about the 10,000 uh, zone. So this is looking, looking like an uptrend flag to me, as uh, sorry, a downtrend flag uh, with the flag pointing upwards. This is quite typical, and it's a sort of textbook picture. But till the breakdown happens, it's wait and watch. So consumer durables definitely been very badly hit. A uh, lot of the guys on TV, if you see, We'll openly are now saying that the sales have come down by 30 to 40 percent. If that's what we are saying officially, I just uh, would like to add another you know, 5, 10, 20 percent to what they're saying. Mm, so consumer durables, uh, bad shape, bearish. Capital goods, uh, there was some news about LNT, and that's why probably the capital goods index 
to show some green stuff today. Uh, but uh, nothing very, you know, strong. Uh, surprising, I'm wondering where the Marubozu type almost uh, candle has appeared in the Nifty. Uh, that something will be there, any of you see. I think it's IT. Uh, so, anyhow, coming back to capital goods, a uh, small recovery would not buy into it, maybe look at sell into it at around 14,000 levels. FMCG index, so BSE FMCG, so that's uh, clearly uh, trying to recover, uh, but again, early days um, has come to uh, you know, a zone of price action. Uh, I was going to say support, but a zone of price action, a lot of price action in that seven and a half to 8,000 level in the last uh, um, last year, 2015, right? Uh, and right now, you, know, you look at the MACD and the way it opened up so widely, uh, very circumspect about whether you can, you know, no, 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 no buying into this actually. Again, I think the evidence is reiterating that. All right. And then looking at uh, IT index, well, there is your answer as to why anything may have happened. So BSC IT, and we should see that on the CNX IT also. Yep, better. Massive recovery, perhaps because of the rupee uh, falling, um, makes the, them more competitive. Uh, the inward remittances which they have not yet convert can boost their earnings a bit. Oh. And remember that the IT index had already been underperforming for over a year, and some of the IT stocks had fallen a good 30 to 50 percent. And after this, uh, is this a recovery that was a uh, long time coming? Uh, by the looks of just the candles, looks like that. You know, IT does not seem to be something to sell anymore. IT could be a buying proposition. Um, oh, wow. I definitely not expecting such a strong weekly chart. Uh, but this indeed is a strong, it's a weekly you know, in bullish engulfing, uh, that that's pretty strong. And um, on the IT, I think definitely no more shorting at this point. One should definitely be looking at the potential um, buying opportunity. This particular picture here, if you can notice this, this is like your rounding uh, bottom or a saucer uh, formation. Clear neckline broke out. Strong, strong candle. The only thing, volume not so strong, uh, but that's uh, okay. We'll leave with that. Um, uh, hmm. Okay, so IT is the reason why a lot of drama happened today on the bullish side. Coming to uh, metals. So that's something that we had kept saying that perhaps should buy, buy, buy. And uh, well, look at it. The metal last uh, four candles have actually been quite strong. So you have a uh, Rami here, and then you have the market going up, up, up. So that definitely is interesting. So you've got uh, market going up. The metals index are going up. Uh, First sector index we have seen with so many green candles, definitely metals are to be bought and should not be shorted. Uh, the power index, hmm, this is really interesting. Okay, okay, why am I saying this is interesting? I'm saying this is interesting because. So this is the 2011 year, 2011, so five year chart. Uh, just surprised that uh, it hasn't fallen. 
you know, in a sense, like the other sectors, and there is definitely you know bullish divergence on the power sector. Okay, so we've got the market going down, or trending down rather, while the indicators are clearly you know, going up, and we're seeing this even on the MACD, but MACD only for the daily and the weekly, it's not yet there, but it will show up on the daily before it shows up on the weekly, right? So, yep, 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 yep. Hmm. Right, just looking at it, looking looking as a potential opportunity to buy sometime maybe a week or two or maybe a month down. Just uh all right, let's just let's move on. So this uh, bullish divergence definitely there. Coming to reality. So that one got really, really badly hit by the demonetization. Seems to be recovering uh, a bit right now. On the weekly chart, you've got a very good hammer. And you can also see that uh, that hammer came at a very good known support level. And that's that too on a weekly chart. So weekly hammer uh, has... Okay, uh, but even go to the extent of saying that we are seeing a head and shoulder bottom here. Okay, that's your head and shoulder bottom and should it break out, which looks like it will. This could go from 1170 to 1270, so 100 points, that's almost a good 8%, 100 points from this point takes you to 1350, which is where my cursor is right now. And uh, really nothing in the recent past, but uh, just trying to see if there's anything at 1350. Okay, definitely a support resistance zone from the tops and bottoms that we can see in uh, last year. Uh, so 1350 looks like it is coming, and uh, in case there is something like an interest rate cut or something. I think that's easily going to happen, and I mean, 1350 will easily happen. You probably will see it even go to 1450. So, um, reality power. Hmm, looks like they're all potential buys. Uh, MCG, Anjima, Durables, perhaps uh, Capital Goods also, and uh, IT of course, but I forget. Alright, so that's a pretty uh, what, what to say, almost drastic change in the fortunes of the various sectors. Uh, till about three weeks back, um, it was definitely a different list. Uh, oh, along this one also. So this is... Uh, Right. So yeah, so to sort of um, 
wind up this part of the webinar. Uh, still going on with that mixed picture. If you remember, for about a month, we've been saying, or more, I think, um, that the Nifty is bearish, but individual sectors and definitely quite a few individual stocks are strongly bullish. There's been definitely a small uh, uh, shift in balance on which sectors are long, which sectors are short in the last two weeks. But uh, that division continues that some are long and some are short. And one will find plenty of opportunities on both sides, right, depending on what you're looking for. All right, so what uh, we'll do next is, so this is part one of today's IMR. We'll end this uh, webinar here. And then we'll take a look at the select uh, stocks in, uh, uh, I would say, definitely IT, uh, reality, metals, and looking at uh, banks and maybe FMCG, right? Uh, and look at that from the FNO slash Nifty slash Nifty Next indices, and uh, that will cover it, part two, right? So I'm ending this year. I'll close the session and I'll send you a link in about 30 seconds from our part two of today's IMR. So thank you and see you on the other side.